The United States has a storied and sometimes grisly history. And if horror movies have taught us anything, it's that places with a lot of history are bound to spawn some truly freaky ghost stories. Some of these ghosts have been spotted so frequently over the years, they've graduated from mere campfire tales to full-blown haunted legends. Today, we're digging up the most famous ghosts in the United States. But before we cry boo, why not subscribe to the Weird History YouTube channel? Then let us know in the comments below what other spooky stories you want to hear about. For now, the ghosts of the past are calling. If you dare. On January 23rd, 1897, a young boy went to a home in Greenbrier County, West Virginia, intent on doing chores. What he found instead was the body of the newly married Elva Zona Heaster at the bottom of the staircase. So does he still get paid for the day? Authorities, and more suspiciously, Zona's husband, Edward S. Shu, insisted she had succumbed to a heart attack during childbirth and that an autopsy was not necessary. What's more, Shu dressed Zona in clothes that covered just about every inch of her body, including her neck, which was wrapped with a scarf. Eventually, Zona's mother, Mary Jane, caught on that Shu's previous wife had also passed away under mysterious circumstances. But the real gotcha moment came after Elva Zona Heaster's spirit visited her mother and told her flat out that Edward had murdered her. Mary Jane convinced the prosecutor to reopen the case and exhume Heaster's body for a proper autopsy. The medical examiners discovered that Zona's windpipe had been crushed and her neck was broken, symptoms which are generally not the result of childbirth and are more commonly found in people who have been strangled by their husbands. Shu was arrested and spent the rest of his life in prison. He holds the distinction of being the only case in which testimony from a ghost helped convict a murderer. Pawleys Island in South Carolina is a summer resort town as beautiful as it is dangerous due to its particular vulnerability to storms. Lucky for them, the island is home to a helpful specter just dying to warn them of any upcoming storms. Legend says that an apparition known as the Gray Man has appeared prior to every major hurricane that has hit the island for the past 200 years. The origin of this pearlescent poltergeist involves a young woman who was waiting for her fiancé to return home. While taking a shortcut back, her love ran his horse right through a patch of quicksand where they both sank like a scene right out of the never-ending story. The young woman was heartbroken and claimed that one day, while walking on the beach, a figure that appeared to be her fiancé told her she was in danger and to leave the island. She obeyed and, that night, a storm hit the coast, destroying most of the homes except for hers. Since that day, locals say this friendly gray man continues to warn others of impending storms because no one has the heart to tell him we all have a weather app on our smartphones. The story of Resurrection Mary takes place in Chicago, a city with no shortage of spooky happenings and dark occurrences. The ghost of Resurrection Mary is believed to be that of a young woman from 1920 who was walking home from a party when she was fatally struck in a hit-and-run accident. Imagine how unlucky you had to be to get hit by one of the eight cars on the road in 1920. Ever since, countless people have reported seeing her ghost along Archer Avenue in Willow Springs about 30 minutes outside of the Windy City. Legend claims that late at night, Mary walks along the road in her white gown asking strangers for rides. The name Resurrection Mary stems from the Resurrection Cemetery near where she is believed to have died and been buried, and where her spirit often asks to be dropped off. Those who claim to have picked her up say she vanishes into thin air before reaching her destination, just when the subject of gas money is about to come up. If wandering strange roads isn't your bag, some say you can also catch Mary's ghost in local nightclubs and share a dance with her before taking notice of her freezing cold hands, at which point she allegedly disappears, which caused many to refer to her as cold hands with a warm heart. The RMS Queen Mary was once the greatest cruise ship ever built, but now spends its days as a local haunt for all the local haunters. 
Since 1967, the massive ship has been permanently docked in Long Beach, California. Officially, 49 deaths occurred on board, and scary occurrences have been reported all over the ship from stem to stern. So much so that paranormal investigation teams from all over the world have traveled to California in the hopes of seeing a g -g 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 ghost. Two of the most famous deaths on the cruise liner were crew member John Petter, an 18-year-old who was crushed under a steel door, and senior second officer W.E. Stark, who accidentally drank acid he thought was gin. Man, if I had a nickel. Since his death, people have reported hearing eerie sounds, experiencing odd lights and cold spots, and even the apparition of a young man in overalls near the door where Petter perished. You can experience a lot of this yourself by booking a tour in the most spiritually active spots on the ship. Just don't drink the gin. Possibly the most famous poltergeist on this list, the Bell Witch has been haunting people's imaginations since 1804. John Bell and his family moved to a farm in Robertson County, Tennessee, and had a pretty uneventful 13 years there to start out. However, in the summer of 1817, all hell suddenly broke loose. The family began seeing strange creatures on their land. At the same time, odd noises started sounding off in the home. It was just a few bumps and knocks at first, the kind of thing a horror movie character would shrug off as the wind before being eaten by a werewolf. But the noises turned into full-on voices that spoke directly to the family and would start conversations about religion or even predict the future. Yeah, let's hear the wind do that. The ghost would disappear for a while, but would always find its way back to the family with a fresh torture to offer. John and his youngest daughter, Betsy, got it the worst from the Bell Witch. It would threaten John directly and once knocked Betsy unconscious. John eventually perished in 1820, and many attributed his death to the witch's never-ending torments. Today, the property is still a hotbed of paranormal activity, with some visitors claiming to see strange shapes and orbs appear in their photographs. Whoever the Bell Witch is, she isn't shy. Albuquerque, New Mexico is home to the Chemo Theater, which opened its doors in 1927 and is still in operation today so you can bet it's seen its fair share of hauntings. And we're not just talking about the run of Susicle they did. One of their more tragic stories is that of Bobby Darnell, a six-year-old boy who was killed when the boiler under the concession stand exploded. From that day on, theater goers and workers have reported seeing a little boy running around and playing pranks. This is especially true for the performers on stage, who avoid getting tricked during shows by leaving out treats like donuts or candy to appease their pee-wee poltergeist. There are stories of shows going haywire if someone ever touches the snacks or forgets to put them out. If you've ever seen a hungry child, you know this part is true. And Bobby isn't alone either. Another frequently spotted spirit is a young woman wearing a bonnet who wanders the theater, appearing to mind her own business like she's looking for her seat or something. What are the odds she's in cahoots with Bobby for half the candy? Kate and Maggie Fox were young girls when their family moved into a haunted cottage in New York's Hydesville Memorial Park in 1848. Before they moved in, no family had been brave enough to stick it out in the house due to all the literal bumps in the night. In March of 1848, Kate and Maggie were in bed listening to the mysterious noises when they decided to have a conversation with the spirit. They learned that they were speaking to the late Charles B. Rosna, who claimed to have been the victim of foul play and was buried in the basement. Boy, imaginary friends back then were intense. Attempts to find Rosna's body were stalled due to flooding in the area, but the Fox sisters continued to contact the spirit, eventually growing up to become famous mediums and the first modern spiritualists. Interestingly enough, bones were eventually discovered in the wall in 1904, seemingly confirming the Fox children's story. The home still stands and is open to visitors who hear bumping and knocking to this day. Jean Lafitte was an infamous pirate who lived in New Orleans, Louisiana, in the early part of the 1800s. Lafitte smuggled everything from spices and jewels all the way up to human beings, so he was not the most scrupulous fellow. Lafitte was well known in the city, wetting the beaks of the wealthy elite and running a blacksmith shop, which is still open to this day. Legend has it that this pirate hid his booty somewhere in that shop, but so far, nobody has been able to find it. This might be because whenever anyone gets close, 
they'll spot a pair of red eyes staring up at them through the cracks in the walls and fireplace. When the evil red pirate eyes meet your gaze, it is time to exit the shop. Those eyes could be hidden gems, but who wants to stick around long enough to find out? In the early days of the Colorado Gold Rush, Buckskin Joe was a bustling mining town boasting a population of 5,000. Residents of Buckskin Joe found entertainment in the various dance halls, saloons, and bars the town had to offer. As the story goes, the dancing gigs brought a beautiful young woman to town, dressed head to toe in black. She got a job at Buck Bill's dance hall, where her beauty made her extremely popular with the patrons. She was given the nickname Silver Heels, thanks to the shiny silver heels she often wore. And to be fair, you are hoping for a nickname with those shoes. Tragedy struck when a smallpox epidemic tore through the town. Silver Heels hung up her dancing gowns and threw on some scrubs to attend to the sick townsfolk, eventually falling ill herself. She was nursed by a woman named Aunt Martha, the only person allowed in her home during her recovery. One night, Silver Heels got out of bed, dressed herself, bid Aunt Martha good night, and disappeared forever. A search was conducted with no luck. Silver Heels was gone without a trace. Or was she? Soon after her mysterious disappearance, a figure began appearing at the nearby Buckskin Joe Cemetery. The figure was clad in all black and would walk from tombstone to tombstone laying flowers. Perhaps a subtle dig against the groundskeeper? Most people believe the spirit is Silverheels, comforting all the people who succumbed to the outbreak. Of course, you could ask her yourself. The Buckskin Joe Cemetery is still operating and still cranking out ghost sightings to this day. So what do you think? Know of any other famous phantasms we forgot to mention? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, check out these other videos from our Weird History.